When lightning flashes across the sky, it releases somewhere around 300 million volts, or the equivalent to power 25 million car batteries. Some say you're more likely to be zapped by lightning in your lifetime than to win the lottery. And statistics seem to prove this urban myth, as each year around 28 US locals do get electrically charged from the sky. The world's infrastructure can be affected by lightning too. That's because it generally seeks out the tallest structure around. But in certain conditions, it can also strike an open field. So scientists came together and invented a laser lightning rod that might help. This unique invention might make lightning strikes a bit more manageable, since it can guard a much larger area than the traditional one. And it's flexible. Classic lightning rods work like magnets for that powerful electrical charge. There are these tall metal devices placed on top of buildings. When a storm approaches, the rod provides an easy path for lightning to follow, preventing it from hitting other parts of the structure. The rod is also connected to the ground with a conductor, like a wire, helping the electrical charge to safely make its way into the earth. This process protects the building and the humans in it by directing the electrical energy away. We've been using lightning rods for the last 300 years, courtesy of Benjamin Franklin. But they're not damage-proof. When it comes to safeguarding vast spaces like airports, they can't manage. That's because they can only cover an area proportional to their height. Here's where this new, improved lightning rod can help. When the laser zaps the sky, it leaves behind a trail of superheated air called plasma. The same way a sculptor carves out traces in clay, the laser creates channels in the air. These channels then become the lightning's new favorite route, guiding it down to the ground. This new method was tested in the Swiss Alps back in 2021, and the results were promising. These lasers do have their own disadvantages. They aren't always available and need a heads up. That's because they have to be activated before a bolt hits. If you're a second too late, tough luck. Also, once the laser stops, the air loses its conductivity pretty quickly. This means the laser rod might not have enough power to guide the lightning safely. A potential solution might be monitoring the electric fields around a certain area, predicting where lightning might strike. Yet, these new rods still need more testing and lots of funds. The European Space Agency found another way to make lasers useful, to turn moon dust into roads. It would make our future lunar exploration missions much easier if a laser beam could do the hard jobs, allowing astronauts to drive around the moon. This discovery might also help with another tricky issue, moon dust clinging to everything in sight. Roads on the moon might seem too much of a hustle for now, since we haven't been to our satellites since 1972. But when future space explorers will touch down again, they don't just plan to walk small distances. It'll be nice to have them driving around so they can explore larger areas. Problem is, that pesky moon dust is very fine, abrasive, and sticky. Back during the Apollo missions, it clogged up equipment, eroded spacesuits, and even caused a lunar rover to overheat. That's why scientists want to zap simulated moon dirt with a laser. This laser-powered project used a 12-kilowatt laser to melt simulated moon dirt into a solid, glassy surface, perfect for moon roads. The plan isn't to send a huge laser on the moon. This device they're testing here on Earth is like a stand-in for the sun, mimicking what lunar sunlight could do. The idea is to eventually concentrate sunlight using a big lens on the moon's surface. Some experiments have been done so far with different laser sizes, finding that a bigger beam made the whole process go smoother. Instead of dealing with tiny molten balls, they got a stable layer of molten moon dirt that's easier to work with. What they got was a glassy, somewhat brittle material that can handle downward forces. And even if it cracks, it's fixable. The laser beam was used to make triangle-shaped road parts that fit together like puzzle pieces, forming solid surfaces across lunar soil. If this goes as planned, 
we'll have moon roads made of interlocked triangles. This unique type of moon pavement could be the solution for landing pads too. Lasers can help piece together information on long-lost civilizations too. Discovering Maya cities has always been difficult for researchers exploring Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula. For years, experts believed no early civilization could have thrived in that harsh environment. But advancements like light mapping technology and laser scans are showing us this might not be true. LiDAR technology can lend a helping hand for archaeologists, especially in areas that are hard to physically reach. That's because it's like we're equipping computers with a pair of eyes. The whole thing works as a flashlight, sending out small light beams in the form of a pulsated laser. These beams bounce off objects like trees and buildings and come back to the flashlight. LiDAR measures how long it takes for the light to return, creating a map of the surroundings. When a self-driving car or robot wants to know where it is, it uses LiDAR to send out these light beams. By figuring out how long they take to come back and where they hit, the car or robot can understand what's around it, making it safer for them to move around through the fog or at nighttime without bumping into things. With this technology, a team uncovered the massive Maya city of Akomtun. LiDAR technology helped researchers to map the jungle floor, revealing hidden structures. Yet someone still needed to verify these findings on foot. The journey to Acompton wasn't extremely challenging. The region, quite far from the nearest airport, is mostly unexplored, accessible only through old hunting and logging routes. The dense terrain made the trek challenging, taking the team up to two weeks to cover just 30 miles. But the effort paid off, revealing monumental structures like a large acropolis and intriguing shapes hinting at a marketplace or cultural center. LiDAR is also used in rovers we'll need to explore other planets. This will allow the robots we send up there to navigate their surroundings without direct human indications. It's also helped us better understand the best location to place solar panels, making it cheaper and faster for us to meet our energy needs. We might also be able to use lasers to predict how a volcano is going to act. These structures are loaded with magma, the molten rock sneaking upwards from the Earth's insides. When a volcano blows its top, a chemical reaction happens, transforming magma into what we call lava. The specialists behind this new use of lasers think of magma as the computer code of volcanoes. It reveals information on how a volcano might pop up. That's because not all eruptions bring lava. And even if they do, there are different lava types depending on how runny it is. Magma is like a mix of liquid, gas, and crystals that are shaken up inside the volcano. There are many elements at play before a volcanic eruption, so it's hard to study and understand that complex chemistry. To organize things around a bit, scientists hit the cooled magma, the rock matrix, with a laser, just like the ones you might have encountered if you've ever had eye surgery. It makes the chemical components easier to study. This latest laser eye method was used on samples from a 2021 eruption, which lasted 85 days. It covered over four square miles, spewing loads of lava that wrecked over a thousand homes and displaced over 7,000 people. To prevent such events from happening again, scientists need more data. It's true, earthquakes and ground shifts help specialists predict what a volcano might do, but Knowing a bit more about its chemistry can help a bit more. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.